Friends, Holy Family is the family that we all born in. It's the family of the church. It's the family that Elizabeth will be born into on this day when she will be baptized and we will witness this baptism and we will pray for her. A holy family is also a family that we were born in, our parents who raised us, who brought us to church, who gave us the gift of sacraments that the church has given us as gift. And so we celebrate that on this day when we celebrate the gift of the holy family. While we read the Gospel of Matthew in this year A cycle, Matthew and Luke are the only Gospels that talk about the infancy narrative, all what happens before the birth and at the birth of Jesus. But Matthew gives it from the perspective of Joseph, and Luke shares the infancy narrative story from the perspective of Mary. So that is why today's gospel, which is unique to Matthew, flight to Egypt, the angel telling Joseph three times, you know, go to Egypt, come back to Israel, go south to Judea, no, 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 go north to, you know, Nazareth, all to save the child Jesus, to save the child Jesus and to save the Holy Family and to protect the family. So everything we heard in today's scriptures in the gospel is from the perspective of Joseph, how he cares for the Holy Family. So it's pertinent to talk about the role of Joseph as husband, father, provider, and protector of the Holy Family. Joseph follows the instructions of the angel and he listens to the voice of the angel and follows the path that the angel asks him to take. He is paying attention to all the warning signs that the angel is telling him and acts in faith and acts in trust in the Lord. This holy family is a role model of faith in the face of familial troubles in family lives. No parent raising a child or children, the holy family included, are free from, strugg are free from struggles and pains. But all parents who raise their children in faith and trust in the Lord are building a firm foundation for their families, for their children as they grow in faith. There's enough and more opposition to family life today. There's an attack on family life today. So more so, it's so difficult for you parents to raise your children in a culture like this. So we commend you for what you do. And the church supports you in what you do. That's why the babies that you bring to church every day, every Sunday, we thank God for them. And we thank God for you and your desire to bring them. It's tough enough, you know, to get them dressed and bring them here. So we got to support them, friends. Never ever, you know, speak a word of unkindness when a child is not you know, is having a bad day, you know. We all have done that, you know. My mother told me I used to crawl under the pews. I never knew that, but she said that, you know. So, but people were tolerant. They were loving. They were welcoming. Be that kind of family. That's the family that's going to raise saints, that's going to raise men and women, boys and girls to join religious communities and bring the gifts back into this community so they can serve the church here at St. John the Apostle in Western Oregon, the church in the Archdiocese of Portland. You know, on the Christmas Day, the family, a grandmother came to me after one of the masses and, you know, wanted to talk to me. So I said, okay, I will talk to you. Let me finish, you know, greeting people. And so we went into the Western room and she just broke down and she was so 
so troubled by what how how the family treats her you know how she's abused how she's talked back how she is not appreciated for what she does she told me she mops the floor when the grandkids spill and these grandkids are not babies these are teenage grandkids you know when they mess the house she vacuums she keeps everything in order she does laundry she cooks for them and guess what she gets in return abuse right it might dampen your spirit on this feast of the holy family but there are many families that that face such realities for whatever reason maybe people didn't raise their children in the way they had to or maybe children didn't follow the path they have to or they have now followed a different path and the grandchildren are imitating them if we want our children to follow the role model of saint joseph and mary well you parents have to do that first that is your primary duty as mom and dad to love and respect each other not only when children are around you but even when children are not around you so that it will come naturally for you to love and respect your spouse and this is what they see in you they will imitate you and they will follow you and they will follow that example when they grow up and they will respect and honor and love and obey as the scripture says you know in the book of uh, wisdom book of sirach today the wisdom literature gives such practical teaching who can't accept that you know loving honoring respecting but it also gives a gift if you honor and love your father and mother you will atone for your sins through your care for your parents and the later part of book of sirach talks about how a man and women as they grow in age get old you know will have loss of memory we know you know alzheimer's dementia we are dealing with it in family lives even then while it troubles you most so then we've got to respect and love and care for this parents i know it's hard yet if there was that love that gave you bath dressed you up brought you to church took you to school took you to places brought you all the gifts well this is the time to return that favor back in more ways than one especially when your father or mother who's elderly and doesn't remember things that's the best way to give gift to them because you know you won't get it back that's the way the selfless gift works pope john paul ii wrote a great encyclical uh, wrote a great exhortation on joseph actually many of you may be familiar with it many of you may not have heard about it it's about the guardianship of joseph guardian of the redeemer redemptoris custos the custodian of the redeemer and in this john paul ii highlights the role of joseph in the life of the church to quote john paul ii and so jesus way back to nazareth from bethlehem passed through egypt just as israel had followed the path of the exodus from the condition of slavery in order to begin the old covenant so joseph guardian and cooperator in the providential mystery of god even in exile watched watched over the one who brings about the new covenant about 100 years before john paul ii wrote his exhortation pope Leo the 13th wrote this prayer seeking the intercession of Saint Joseph most beloved Joseph dispel the evil of falsehood and sin graciously assist us from heaven in our struggle with the powers of darkness and just as once you saved child Jesus from mortal danger so now defend God's holy church from the snares of her enemies and from all adversity 
Today, we still have good reason to commend our families and everyone to St. Joseph. Just a couple highlights from this exhortation. One is that Joseph's role is of a guardian of a redeemer. He is the custodian of the redeemer. He is the protector of the holy family. He takes care of his wife, Mary, and their son, Jesus. He kept them safe. He protected them. He just did, he just did not provide. He's not just a breadwinner. He's much more than that. Working, providing for the family. We don't think enough of the father's protected family from the forces of evil and from the forces of wickedness in the world today. We live in a beautiful world, don't get me wrong. We live in a great country, don't get me wrong. Yes, it is a wonderful world. But it's also a very wicked world. There is evil around. Good and evil exist. It existed in the time of Jesus. And this evil attacks families. And this evil destroys families. And this evil especially destroys innocent minds and hearts. The children. To corrupt their minds. To corrupt their hearts. To set them on the wrong path. And to lead them into evil and dangers. I just celebrated a great graveside service for a young man who was tormented by these evils of drugs and abuse that he caught in early teenage years. And while his family supported, cared, and you know, gave him all the help he needed, he just couldn't get out of it because evil just captured him. How many young minds and hearts in our families are facing this reality. I know fatherhood may be hard for some of us, the way maybe a father treated us, or maybe we saw men treating their wives and you know, their children. But here's an example of Joseph, who really followed the heart of our father God and led a good life of fatherhood. So father's role, just like Joseph's role, is to be a guardian, is to be a protector, is to be a, not just a provider, but a custodian of the family. Not just a breadwinner, but to protect the family from the evil influences, the evil forces around the world that seek to destroy family. And the way that father does is the same way that Joseph did. It's by listening to the voice of God. It's by listening to the voice of the angel. It's by listening, or should I say, forming a right good conscience first as men and women. And then we will truly attune ourselves to the voice of God that is calling us to that responsibility, to that vocation, to lead the family after the heart of Joseph, who is the patron of the whole church. And so that leads us to the second part, that Joseph is, precisely because of his role as protector of the Holy Family, he takes the role of a guardian and protector of the whole church. You know, Joseph is the patron of the universal church, the whole Catholic church. If he could take care of the little baby and his mother, the one that was supposed to redeem, the one that redeemed the whole world and brought us salvation, Joseph can protect the whole church if we seek his intercession. Let us, as we celebrate the Holy Family, see our families through the perspective of Joseph and see what can be undone and what can be done better to live as good parents, children, brothers, sisters, family of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.